Good day, good day everyone and once again we're back together. Alright, so we're just looking at some questions on functions. Someone actually sent me this question and they were asking about, you know, those uh, sort of difficult questions when it comes to functions. Uh, but let me just go through this question with you. Right, so they say to us the diagram below shows the graph of f of x, which is x squared minus 4x minus 11 and g of x, which is uh, actually equal to the derivative, right, of f of x, all right? So they say a and b are the intercepts of f and c, right, uh, the intercept, the x-intercept of g, right? They say d is the turning point of f, and f and g intersect at m, which is negative 1 and t, and n, which is 7 and 10, right? Now, Let's just quickly have a look at the questions that they have there for us, okay? Now, they say to us, calculate the coordinates of D. Now, note in this case, remember that D is our turning point, right? So, we've got the equation there, x squared minus 4x minus 11, right? So, we can find out what the values of the turning points are, right? So, we know that our f of x value is x squared minus 4x minus 11, right? So remember, we're given the equation. So in this case, all we simply do to get the turning point, okay? So the x value at d, which is the turning point, would be minus b all over 2a, right? And this would be, uh, in this case, that's minus a negative 4, right? So remember, that's our B value, right? Divided by 2 times our A value in this case, which is the coefficient of X squared is 1. So that's 4 divided by 2. Um, in this case, that should give us 2. So the X value at D is 2, right? We can now find the Y value by substituting that X value, right? Back into the original equation. So we're going to say F of 2, so everywhere we see x, we're going to put 2 there, minus 4 times 2, minus 11, right? So this is going to be 4, minus 8, minus 11, right? So that's minus 19, right, plus 4, which should give us a negative 15, okay? Right, so I hope that you get that. So that means that uh, the values, or rather the coordinates of d, will most certainly be 2 and negative 15. Okay, right, you can uh, just verify that. So that's negative 11 and minus 8 there, which is negative 19 plus 4, which will give us negative 15. In fact, I don't know why I wrote negative 11 there. Right, so there we go there. Right, so they say calculate the distance CN. Now, distance CN would be this distance here, right? So, uh, we want to know. Now, what would be the coordinates, by the way, of um, C, right? Now, remember that the graph of G is the derivative of the graph of F, right? So, uh, either one of two ways, right? We know that the derivative is equal to 0 at X is equal to 2, meaning that uh, this would be uh, the turning point of the graph where the derivative is equal to zero. So that means that the x value at c would be two. But if you were not sure about that, right, what you could do is to find the uh, graph of g of x, right? So it's the derivative there. So that would be 2x minus four, right? Now, where would this graph be? Uh, where would the x value be equal to or rather the y value be equal to zero, the x-intercept, right? So we know where is this graph equal to zero? That's 2x minus four, right? If we take the uh, 2x to the other side, we've got minus 2x is equal to negative four, and we divide both sides by negative two, and so x would be equal to two, right? So now we know that this value here, right? Uh, the coordinates of C, is uh, 2, where x is 2 and y is 0. Now, when we look for cn, now remember, we're going to use our distance formula, right? So this is going to be the x value at uh, c 
minus the x value at n, right, squared, plus the y value at c, minus the y value at n, this is squared, right? So what's going to happen there? We're going to have, right, so the x value at c in this case is 2, the x value at n is 7, right, squared, plus the y value at c is 0, um, and the y value at, okay, I just wanted to remove that, the y value at n in this case would be 10, and remember to square that value. Right, so what are we going to do here? So 2 minus 7, what, that would give us negative 5, but negative 5 squared, remember we put it in brackets, that would give us 25, right? Plus, uh, in this case, we've got negative 10, all squared, that should give us a hundred. Remember, once we square, we also square the break. I mean, we square the sign as well. Uh, so we're going to have the square root of uh, one twenty-five. So in this case, the square root of one twenty-five. Okay, that gives us five root five. Okay, so that's five root five units. Okay, that's how long the value of C n is. Right. Okay, so we've got the value of Cn, right? So these interesting questions that they always ask us, right? So they say to us, for which values of n, right? Uh, rather, of x, rather, is f of x less than g of x? Now, I want you to please remember. So we want where the graph, the parabola, is below the straight line graph, right? Which x values are there where the, uh, the parabola is below the straight line graph? Now, look at this. So, if you look at this point here, all right, I'm going to mark it in a different color, right? This is where they intersect, right? And what happens? Now, the parabola is actually between here. The parabola is below the straight line graph, okay? So, this is where f of x is less than g of x, okay? So that means, what's the x value at this point? Well, it's negative one, right? And what's the x value at the other intersection? That's seven, right? So it means for any value between negative one and seven, now because they said less than, uh, in this case, we're going to actually not include the value of negative one because it is actually equal to. So we're going to say, well, x is an element of negative 1, right, uh, to 7. Or if you want to write it in another way, we're going to say, well, x is less than 7 and greater than negative 1, okay? So that's another way of actually writing down the same thing, okay? Right, remember, we don't uh, include those values negative 1 and 7, because in this case, the graph actually, um, you know, is equal, or the two graphs are equal at that point. Right, now let's go to uh, the very last question. They say to us, uh, where for which x values, right, is g of x minus f of x a maximum? Now remember, the moment they say to us, we've got g of x, uh, okay, so that is 6.2.2, okay, uh, sorry, I just want to change that color there, right, so 6.2.2, um, so they wanted g of x minus f of x, where is this a maximum? Now, if we wanted to, we can give this, uh, you know, just another expression, let's call it uh, d of x, okay, let's d for distance, right? So d of x would be the graph of g minus the graph of f, right? Now remember, we got the equation for the graph of g by taking the derivative, so that's going to be 2x minus 4, right? So that will be 2x minus 4, right? Minus f of x, right? Now what is our f of x graph? Remember, that's going to be x squared minus 4x minus 11, okay? So that's our graph of uh, f of x, 
right? So that means that dx, let's try and actually simplify this. This is going to be 2x minus 4 minus x squared plus 4x plus 11, okay? So let's take all the like terms. So we've got, the, we've got an x squared term there, right? Minus x squared. And then we've got 2x plus 4x, which should give us 6x, okay? And we've got negative 4 uh, plus 11 in this case. And this, uh, so remember, we've got negative 4 uh, plus 11, right? So this should give us um, plus uh, 7, okay? Right. So in this case, we know that this is going to give us that equation. So this is the equation of d of x. Now, when we want to maximize, right? So you can see this is a parabola, right? This is the equation of a parabola. So where is the parabola maximum, right? At the um, uh, turning point. So how do we get the value of the turning point? So we're going to say, right, so for x value at the maximum, okay, that would be minus b over 2a, right? So this would be minus our b value uh, would be 6, okay? Divided by our a value in this case would be negative 1, okay? So this would be negative 6 divided by negative 2, so that would be uh, 3, okay? So it means at this x value, our um, uh, you know, that expression g of x minus f of x will be maximum. Another way that you could have done this is by taking the derivative of d of x and making it equal to zero. And how do we get that derivative? So this is going to be minus 2x, right? Remember, it's the jump down and subtract 1. So plus 6, this would be equal to zero. So that would be negative 2x uh, is equal to negative 6. And we can divide both sides by negative 2. And so x will be equal to 3. All right. So I hope that actually makes sense. Right. So that is how the cookie crumbles when it comes to this question. I hope that you understood it. And uh, for the one uh, for the person that sent me this question, uh, thank you so much. And, um, you know, it, it, it does make quite a difference. OK. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Shop shop.